Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the REC Podcast, brought to you by the REC Toycast. I'm your host, Roman Chavez, and with me as always... Eric Icarus. Eric, do you hear this echo? I do. We're in new digs. We are. We're in new digs, and we if are. you follow me... On Instagram at Rome and REC Podcast. You can follow the show at Rome at REC Podcast. Uh -huh. And you can follow Eric following me on all of these platforms as well. So he will comment and, and, and enjoy himself. Yeah, that's what I um, do. We got new digs, man. We, we are uh, we're in the process of constructing um, my comic book room slash our podcast studio. Yes. And those of you that know us, we are not construction people. Nope. But man, we're figuring it out. We are. Yeah, we're framing and we're wiring yep. and we're uh, drywalling and it's going to be awesome and we can't wait because as we keep teasing, we're going live. We're well, gonna be not live, but you're going to we're going to get some video. Yep. Yep. You're gonna see we'll the money maker. Get some live streams here and there. Yeah, Eric. Yeah. Eric will be all done up. We're gonna wear a little makeup too. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? We'll, we'll see where it takes us. Uh, to start on the show, though, we have some sad news. Obviously, the whole world is is kind of reeling from this, and it is pop culture related as a po and it's just human beings. Uh, the passing of Kobe Bryant, and you wonder why would we talk about this on this pop on a on a pop culture uh, podcast? Well, he. Was a part of pop culture. It was huge. Um, this was our this was our Michael Jordan of, right. of our generation. He's only a few years older than we are. Yes. You know, um, passed away at forty one. Uh, him and his daughter Gianna at thirteen, and it's just very sad. And we just want to make mention, put out our condolences. Um, I remember being in 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 a middle school when he went to the Lakers at like 17, know, 18, right, didn't even go to uh, uh, college to ball, which that, that happens a lot, but it was like the first time that I really remembered it. Right. The first time that I ever took notice of it. And we have lots of friends who are very, very heartbroken about it. Um, and you know, the world is. So, you know, our condolences out to, to the families of, of those people in the, in the helicopter crash and um, you know, Hell, Kobe was a, a five-time champion, Oscar winner. I know, that's, that's what's throwing me off. Yeah, yeah. He you know did an animated short. Yeah, Deer Basketball. Deer Basketball, to, to which he, he, he won the, uh, an Oscar for it. Yeah, I which, mean, come on. That's crazy. You know, do, do what you do and, and do it the best you can. There so you um, at the RSC Podcast... Uh, you know, we, we, we feel for everyone and, uh, and hope everybody can, can get better and, and, and feel better about themselves sooner than later. Yeah, pour one out for Kobe. Pour one out for, for, for Kobe Bryant, slam dunk giant, out play the Kobe, son don't try it. That's from a 90s commercial, just flashed into my head. I thought you were just going. I, I was, was not. Like impressed there for I was there. not. It was, uh, <laughs> it was Kobe Bryant, it was Tim Duncan. Oh, okay. And, uh, and it was, uh, they had some, some hip hop artists with them. I barely remember the commercial, but I remember that line. Kobe Bryant, slam dunk giant, out play the Kobe. Son, Jeez, don't try it. Man. All right. I mean, he's a, he's a monster. Yeah. I, mean, I want to see Shaq win an Oscar. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, ain't yeah, well, I mean, Shaq probably has a Grammy. Okay, he might have a Grammy. I don't know. Yeah, they do just hand those out. <laughs> they just hand those out. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, thoughts and prayers and all of that stuff. Um, we've got some yes. interesting uh, comic book news on on a on a less sour note, on a less sad note, but also sad in its own right. Not obviously not in the same vein. But uh, Arrow has finally come to its end. Its its final episode is airing, um, and. You know, it's, you know, Stephen Amell kind of picked up this weird torch right. that was just not even given to him, but that was abandoned by the Smallville cast. You right. know, they had finished, Smallville had finished their show and then there really hadn't been any great superhero television right. for years, yeah. for years. And Arrow is ending at eight seasons. We've talked about it briefly, but it's it's happening. And uh, I, I follow a lot of the cast on on, uh, on Instagram, and they're all posting very sweet memories, very excuse me, sweet clips, their favorite moments from the show, right. you know. And it's the end of an era, and it's a big deal. Um, I don't know, man. It's it's interesting because that was by far the most. Prominent and strong show of of, of the Arrowverse, the, sure. the CW verse. The CW, yeah. It's, I mean, that show went three seasons. I think three seasons solo uh, before Flash joined the party. Oh, right, right. But it birthed Flash, mm -hmm. Legends of Tomorrow, Black Lightning, Supergirl to an extent. Yeah. Um. Uh, it it's just it's crazy. Now we're going to be getting this Green Arrow and the Birds of. Not, not in the Birds of Prey. Green Arrow in the Canaries, yeah. which is going to uh, follow uh, Ollie's daughter, spoiler, and, um, and two of our, our, our Canary uh, uh, 
uh, two of our black canaries, and you know, for all intents and purposes, it's just going to be a birds of prey thing. And you know, I think Stephen Amell. I mean, just recently in, in the news, he had he was on uh, Michael Rosenbaum's podcast, who was Lex Luthor yeah, in yeah. Smallville, uh-huh. Uh-huh. and he had and to leave. sorority chicks too. and sorority. Don't you dare forget about <laughs> sorority chicks. Um, and he uh, he had to leave early because he had a panic attack. Oh really? Yeah, like he had to like cut the like he was like, hey, you know, actually I'm not feeling well, and he like leaves the podcast, and then it turns out he had had a pretty severe panic attack, and just you know he came back on on Rosenbaum's show about three weeks later, kind of talked about it, was just saying, you know what, you know my show's ending, I'm just like, it it probably just hit him right there. It hit, yeah, it's just like the culmination, just the stress of it, yeah, hopefully leaving the universe in good hands, sure, and you know in our crisis crossovers we do see. You know, spoilers, three, two, one, the kind of final fate of Oliver Queen. Right, right. And how he could possibly come back every sure. now and again, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because they, they do have time travel. So, I yeah, mean, yeah, that just, that's just uh, gets you out anyway. Yeah, it, it's, that it's, point. It, it'll, get, it'll get you done. <laughs> but really, it's just, you know, a, a good send off to a great character. Stephen Amell is just, seems like such a nice guy. And he really, um, you know, really was the torchbearer. Sure. Of the uh, of the comic book TV show, of course. And man, those first three seasons of Arrow are I, phenomenal. I, I, you know, having only probably seen <coughs> four or five episodes, um, I, I gotta say, the time. Okay, so what? What? When did the first uh, episode premiere? What, what you know, eight years ago. Okay, you know, so, so two thousand twelve. It was a barren wasteland for superhero. TV it really was. It Maybe really Agents was. of Shield, or was this before Agents of Shield? It starts. I think before they start around the same okay. time, and even that first that leads me into my next point. But uh, it, for me, it looked so grounded, but it didn't lose the grandiosity of, of, of the superhero genre. No, no, and it, it, it really, it, and it had my and the the main reason I, I that you talked me into watching a few episodes was Deathstroke. Deathstroke, was I'm a Deathstroke fan. Manu Bennett as Deathstroke, right. who I had the pleasure of meeting and right. taking a uh-huh. picture with this handsome devil. Yes, uh-huh. this handsome devil at Comic Con. Um, he was great. They, right, you know they really re, uh, they really they redefined Oliver Queen. Right, and they redefined uh, Deathstroke. In the same show, now there could there there can be a, a point made that they really watered they really watered down Deathstroke, sure. and they yeah. really really made Ollie more brutal. He's more Batman, more Daredevil. Yeah, you would like a lot of the Daredevil comparisons in that first I, season. That was the point I was gonna. Yeah, it's it's um, it, it's amazing to me that we take this C. I, I, am I being generous calling him a C level character in the comics? Uh, yeah, yeah, Back I, in the day, you know, he's always been popular, but I mean, really? he's also. Yeah, because he's always been, you know, he's not afraid of Batman. Right. You know, and, and that makes you very popular. That makes you, that makes you cool. But he is kind of a laughing stock, sure. you know, more so than most people. Just because, I mean, I mean, he looks like Robin Hood. Right. He's yeah, got it's a, a, a boxing glove arrow. Boxing glove arrow. Everybody right. always brings so that you, up. Okay, so just saying that, and then taking that, what we just said, the absurdity of that, mm-hmm. and then making this super gritty, grounded superhero show that looked really, that could, that, that I feel like, could have maybe happened. That can happen. I mean, the fights were great. They were. Choreographed really well, which I'm sorry. Again, Daredevil fan through and through. He's my boy. We don't get MCU's Daredevil, Netflix Daredevil, without Green Arrow. I think you're absolutely right. I'm not even sure. I don't know if there's a direct correlation, oh. but like, uh, you know, Stephen DeKnight started that first season of Daredevil. He was a showrunner. Yeah. And uh, you know that guy has TV roots left exactly. and right, especially he in Buffy saw and Angel. something special in Arrow with with what you could do with fight choreography on TV, <coughs> and he is like, you know what, we can bring this to to the Marvel universe, yeah. and it really, honestly, uh, you know, I might need to backtrack and watch this. Show. I think you'd really enjoy it, and I'm I'm behind on this season, uh, and this was a short season. Um, but you know, it really did seem like Stephen Amell just needed the time. Right. You know, he, I think he needs some time to himself. Sure. I don't know. I think he hoped it would be a big deal for him, right. but it became such a big. I mean, it was. I, I'd say Arrow was more popular than Smallville was at his at oh, its height. Sure. Yeah, um, more people I knew talked about Arrow yeah. than Smallville. Yes, like seriously, um, people great. at my job talk about Arrow, this Arrow, that, and it's great one liners, really good lore. I mean, for all intents and purposes, they made him Batman. Yeah, but but they made it work and they made it make a lot of sense. They had Rachel Gould. They say. had the League of Assassins. Yeah. 
they had Nisa and Talia, and and they did all of this very cool Batman stuff, but with Oliver with, Queen, yeah, Ollie, yeah. and it doesn't take anything away from Batman. It just like creates a, a different yeah. a different way for us to digest that. Sure, you know, it's it, a different pocket universe. Yeah, exactly. Box, you know, when we when we know, especially with the Crisis on Infinite Earths, we know that there's a multiverse. Like this is just Batman from a different world. Sure. you know, just it, different set of tools, exactly. Different background. And, you know, all the stuff in the island, I mean, I'd never seen a show like that. I mean, it was so ambitious because he spent five years on this island. Right. So the first five years of Arrow, they do such a fantastic job of weaving in the flashback stuff to the island and making it pertinent to, like, what's going right. on. So you're getting an origin story told over several years. Yes. And it's it's so cool that you're getting – you know where he ends up. Mm -hmm. it, but, again, you're getting you, – you, you get to get to the beginning – Last. Yes. And it's so cool how, like you said, they mapped it out perfectly. They really did. I mean, they, that's genius. Those, the Berlanti and his people, they did a phenomenal job of, of mapping out a show, giving us enough. One of my favorite things about the show was the fact that when we see Ollie get rescued from the island, I mean, it's just ripe with Easter eggs. Right off the bat, we see an Oliver with, like, you know, the long beard okay. and the bow and arrow. Yeah. He sees a ship off in the distance. And then he fires an arrow into this like pyre to light it so, to like signal for help. Right. And as the camera's kind of like passing over the beach, you see Deathstroke's helmet oh, there man. with an arrow through it, like almost like a, a marker of, sure. of, a, sure. of, of like where he's buried. And you're like, what the heck? I mean, right off the bat, we see, we see the, 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 you know, them leading into Deathstroke. And then when he gets brought back, you know, it's big news. It's all in the first episode. And you know he's all scarred up. Oh, of course. He's got tattoos that he didn't have before. Like they did such a good job. Of, like we're gonna come back to this. We're gonna come and back. Did to they this. deliver? I think they delivered on most things. And maybe I think it is as early as the first season. But like right off the bat, because they do a good job of like, okay, so now you know we've rescued Oliver Queen, and then we see him when he's just like the playboy college dropout yeah. yeah yeah just drop out of college like when we see him with a shirt off so sure. we see that there's no tattoos yeah, we see yeah. so it's like oh and then they do a good job of like they waited they waited i mean they, they didn't reveal what what some tattoos were for three or four years wow. and it was great but it was cool in the first season one of them was russian because oh. like oliver is a part of the russian mob for some reason okay so like we have to get there you know so we have to figure out like why and how and like dude weren't you on this island for five right, years right. no he wasn't you know, so the, the show is ripe with, with – with, with, was so good at like laying Easter eggs and setting things up. They introduced the Flash in the show. Right. You know, Barry Allen and Grant Gustin plays a very the, – the Flash show has gone downhill, but those first two seasons of Flash are excellent. Right. And, you know, we get Hawkman and Hawkwoman. You know, we get all of these things and it was just – it was groundbreaking. It – Changed. I mean, I remember. It changed we, TV landscape. It really did because now, yeah, now sure. there's so many superhero shows. Just ripping. It, like yeah. It. Even Daredevil. Yeah. Did it, bit it hard. Yeah. Reddit did it better, in my opinion. I, I agree with you. I agree. With you. But it didn't have the restrictions of yeah of network. So yeah. they did a really. I mean, that first season, Oliver kills like a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. So and you know what's cool to me is um, this show was so good at one point that it managed to resurrect a character that apparently I'm supposed. To, everyone tells me I need to read about Constantine. Oh yeah. Oh, and yeah. they were able to bring Constantine from a failed TV show into that universe. Yes. Right? Yes. The same actor, right? Same actor. Yeah, that was another thing. Uh, Arrow even saved a show. Right. You know? Um, and then he ended up going on to be uh, a regular on, on Legends of Tomorrow. Right, right. So, I mean, yeah, five or six shows just, just came out of this Arrowverse. Right. That's what we call it, is the Arrowverse. The Arrowverse, yeah. We don't even call Smart. it the, like, we call it the CW shows, but it's really the it's Arrow. Yeah, it's Arrow. And, and it, it, you telling me about it was I, I really couldn't believe it that you're telling me, okay, Oliver Queen, yes, the Robin Hood, yeah, it, it is a street vigilante with tattoos and scarred up and killing people. I mean, I love the tagline too. He comes back from the island, he's got this book, this list of names because him and his father and, and the captain they actually survive, right? Right, and the father, um, like they're running out of food and he kills the captain. And he said, and he tells Oliver, and he's like, "Hey, he's like, basically, I'm paraphrasing. He's like, you know, I've done some bad things." And he gives him this book, and he's like, "He's like, if you get out of here, you got to write my wrongs, basically." And then he kills himself so that Oliver has a chance to survive. Yeah, sure. And so Oliver just lives his whole like first two seasons like based on this book, the names on this list. 
I'm taking these people out because they have failed the city. And I love that. When he initially comes back, you know, he's running like a voice modulator and he's like, he's like, you know, Eric Icarus of, right, you right. know, you have failed this city. Which and, I have. Yeah. <laughs> many times. And, you know, it was just such a great, like, like if I were rich yeah. and I, it didn't matter that I had tattoos, I would totally get a cityscape tattoo across my forearm and have an arrow going across oh, it that's cool, and man. it would say you have failed this city like, <laughs> like in, the, in the in the lights or yeah, something totally, on the building totally. it would be something like that's that awesome, i would be bro. completely my body would be a roadmap of pain and comics <laughs> but we're gonna catch up on the show um we just wanted to give our adoration for Stephen Amell, that whole crew over there, the ups and the downs, you know, uh, we, we rode with you as, as much as we could and, and we'll continue. And, you know, I'm, I'm curious to see what the next chapter is. Sure. Can you can you build, can you keep that universe around without the strongest character? It's sort of what we're going to be seeing with the MCU. Very much so. Very much There's so. There's a parallel there. I agree. Can, can the MCU survive without Robert Downey Jr.? Can the Arrowverse Survive without Stephen Amell, the right. arrow himself. Right. You know, who knows? I mean, a lot of, a lot of crazy stuff going on. Yes. Oof, um, I think I'm having a panic attack. You think, yeah, you think you have one of those? Yeah, you look real relaxed. You look real relaxed. Uh, that, those, that's how your panic attack works. You're, you yeah. turn it down. Yeah. You know, we're getting the vapors. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, and then in some nice, again, as we try to balance, in some nice MCU rumorville. Yeah, rumorville. Um, we might be getting... Brother Voodoo yes. in, in the Multiverse in the, of Madness, right. Doctor Strange 2. Which I'm, how stoked are you about? I, you know, I like it when they pull an obscure character. I'm and visually cool. I love Brother Voodoo in the comics. Brother Voodoo, uh, gently, and, and honestly, I'm drawing a blank on his name right now because I've had a lot of energy drinks, but um, his, his spiel is really cool. You know, from from South, I, I think they end up retconning it that he's from Louisiana, which which makes a lot of sense. Right, right. Uh, I don't know if he was always from Louisiana, but his brother and him were like these voodoo pra practitioners, right, right. and his brother gets killed, but his spe like he could still see his brother's spirit. That's cool. So they kind of like use magic together, sure. and it's very, very like visually, brother voodoo is, so is cool. such a is such a, a very cool character. And that's real quick. Visually awesome, and that's something that could go south real quick. Yes, yes. It could be really offensive. Yes. But they, they, I don't know how they managed to strike a balance where it looks menacing. And it, Creole. It, it, Creole. Yeah. And it pays tribute to, to, to what they're doing. Brother Voodoo that's deserves great. to be a player in the MCU. Yeah. Especially with this kind of darker MCU that we're yeah. going into. And if Morbius does end up having some things to do with the MCU sure. as well... Having Morbius and Brother Voodoo and Doctor Strange and Ghost Rider oh, and Blade, this is this the, could be great. the beginnings of it. Now, again, it's nothing fully confirmed, but no, 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 no. but well, it makes total not? sense. Yeah. Give us more magic. Is there going to be a link between Mordo and Brother Voodoo? Is oh. is Brother Voodoo another part of this wizard right, magician right. set sure. that keeps like hey he fractioned off yeah like or you know yeah yeah just like how there's hogwarts and then there's the american ministry sure, in, in the, sure. in the uh, harry potter world you know I, I don't know how they're going to do it one of my absolute favorite things is um great art new avengers um i believe brian michael bendis wrote it and then lionel uh lionel francis you who I think would be one of your favorite artists. I think you know his art and you don't know that it's him. Right, right. But he did this fantastic story. It's after the uh, Civil War. And uh, Doctor Strange sides with Cap's Avengers. Oh, wow. So okay. Cap is dead at this point. So this okay. is pre... This is post Cap's death in comics. Okay. And so he allows the kind of new Avengers who are following Cap to take, take up in the Sanctum. Okay. And there's this excellent... Excellent uh, uh, story, you know, because at this point, uh, uh, Tony Stark is the head of Shield, right, right, hunting the ones who didn't, of who didn't register, yeah, yeah. and they go to the Sanctum, and it's like empty, sure. And then uh, you know he's like you know telling uh, you know telling his AI to like scan, and like all of the new Avengers oh, are there, yeah. but Doctor Strange is just like doing his doing yeah. his thing, yeah, and he's like looking around, he's like scanning it, and you know, his suit's telling him there's no heat here, there's no nothing, you know, the place is cold, this and that, like yeah. da, da 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 and then Brother Voodoo just walks in, and he like starts lighting up, doing some magic, he looks so cool, and Lionel, Lionel's uh, uh, art is so gritty, and it just works so well, and uh, you know, does all this light show, and then nothing, and he's like, as far as I can tell, this place is empty, 
And uh, Tony's just walking out behind Voodoo, and he looks back, and he's like, I know you guys are here. And he just, like, walks off. <laughs> but it was cool because I can't re- – excuse me. <clears throat> I can't remember if they allude to the fact that he did detect them but right. didn't give them up or – just that Doctor Strange is that much better. I wouldn't say that, I, I, and that's what I would assume. Sure. But for some reason, I have it in my head that maybe Doctor Str- that that maybe uh, Voodoo was doing doing him a, a solid. Sure, sure. Yeah, and and it's cool because you know since Brother Voodoo has uh, you know his his brother spirit, like his brother can like contact the spirit realm. Oh, of course, they can find things out. It's very very cool. You know, oh man, I, I, real quick, but the, don't they? Doesn't he become the Sorcerer Supreme eventually? <laughs> and he's now Doctor Voodoo at some point. That's less. In continuity now, but yeah, just you just a handful of years ago, um, it was after the World War Hulk storyline, right. and you know the Hulk comes back from from Planet Hulk storyline, um, is looking for revenge on the Illuminati, which I'm sure we're going to get sooner than oh, later yeah. uh, in the MCU, and I think that that on side note, I think that that's going to be the next Easter egg. I think one of these Marvel movies is going to end with. Uh, you know, Doctor Strange going into a room and there being Black Panther and Reed Richards, or you know, and that'll be the Easter egg. Like, what what are these guys talking about? I think down the road that that's that should be. I would love that because that's kind of how they did it in the comics, where we see them start sure. talking. And we're like, what does that mean? Yeah. Um, uh, and again, uh, you'd be clamoring for it. It's your favorite. Oh. It's your favorite. Uh, Train, I guess. Uh, the favorite the Illuminati miniseries is my absolute favorite five issues of comics. Maybe ever, right. but definitely in miniseries form. For sure. Um, it's so rereadable. I've read that story front to back countless times. It's, I, it's I absolutely so love it. Dude. But yeah, it'll be so um, in that after that World War Hulk storyline, uh, the Hulk comes back to Earth. He's looking for vengeance against the Illuminati, and he is just wrecking shop. Right, right. So uh, Doctor Strange drinks a demon, basically. He's got this demon. And so he puts to like juice up to fight him, but it makes him unworthy of the of, of being sure. Sorcerer Supreme. So he's charged with finding the next Sorcerer Supreme. Oh, that's messed up. So he goes to Doctor Doom, and he goes to the Hood, and he goes to picks you know all of these yeah. people who know magic, and to see if see if they're worthy because there's a chance. Doom, Doctor Doom could yeah, be the because the whole idea about being worthy to, to wield the eye of Agamotto, it's not like a Thor's hammer or anything like that, is that you're just a guardian for magic. You yeah. gotta protect this realm. Yeah. Doom would love that challenge. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he would abuse it and he'd have to find the next sorcerer supreme as well. So it ends up being Brother Voodoo, right. which they start calling him Doctor Voodoo. Sure. And a lot of people initially dislike that, but they kind of revamped Voodoo's character in which he was like, Oh, this is kind of post Hurricane Katrina, and he is like a uh, like a uh, not like a home doctor, but um, a homeopathic. Not, not, no, no, not, not like he wears a coat and everything like that. But like a, like a family practice. Oh, okay. Like, oh, I've got a cold. Sure. You know, like, okay. like you yeah, know, yeah. he he went to the ten years of medical school and that's it. You yeah, know, yeah, 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 he's yeah. got a family practice for sure. Um, but yeah, so he gets to have the eye of Agamotto for a while, and it, it was they just didn't know what they wanted to do. I think that they, I can't remember who was writing the story, but they really needed to get more like of that Loa. Creole. I don't even know if I'm saying that that word right, but Loa Creole. Um, uh, they needed somebody who was more involved with that. Sure. Because it's just it it didn't resonate. It wasn't interesting. It was coming off, of course, more, coming across like more Bobby Boucher kind of it Creole came, nonsense. Right? Yeah, but then it, they kind of somewhat whitewashed like Brother Voodoo. Like he didn't seem to have like an accent. Like he didn't feel like that same character that I watched try to reveal the New Avengers because. Right. Because when that issue came out a couple years earlier, you know, chicken bones and painted yeah, face, yeah, yeah. you know, very much the uh, 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 what's that Baron Samadhi sure. kind of look to him, right. and he, you know, was oh, I'm in a lab coat and check out my nice dreads, right. and you know, so it, it just it didn't resonate. Sure. So uh, if they do it, they really need to get somebody with a good accent, yeah. uh, strong chops, and somebody who's got to hang with Benedict Cumberbatch. You know who my choice would be, right? Jaiman Hansu. Jaiman Hansu. Man, I don't Come know. On. Could we get him in a third, you know, I don't know, man. That'd be crazy. But what do you think? Casting, dream casting. Would you, I mean, would you, I think he'd be perfect. He'd be perfect. He kind of played <coughs> played that in Constantine, in a, in a, sort of. And the guy that they had playing, um, was it Bushwhacker in, in Luke Cage season two? Yeah, I'm mean, sure. He, he would have been be pretty cool. good. He would have be cool. been pretty good. I liked his look. Yeah. Um, and I liked his accent. Yeah. Um, man, I'm not sure. I'd like to see them go with somebody that I'm less familiar sure. with. 
uh, somebody who can who can who can you know who has the chops. But yeah, yeah I don't have a dream casting because I was. I'm telling you, Jaime could hang with Benedict. Jaime, anyway. Jaime can anyway. hang, but I just I don't. Yeah, he can do accents for days, and he's got that look. Yeah, he looks intimidating. Oh god, and, he's and so just, intimidating. Yeah, like. I, 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 that's, that's who I want. And, oh man, I. We want Jaimin Huntsu for everything. And we have to realize that there are oh, more no, actors. Oh, yeah, we didn't want it for anything, but I think this would be perfect casting. Um, <coughs> you know, real, another cool thing about this, uh, going, if, if this is indeed true, it, it's going to be cool that MCU is doing, like, okay, there's magic, but there's also different types of magic. Yes. And that's what I'm excited for. And that's I, what I'm so excited I, for. Yes, I, I love it because I feel like nobody does magic enough. Right. Everybody does magic, but nobody does magic enough. Right. Even in the Harry Potter world, <laughs> right, they don't right. do enough magic for me. I need more magic. Yeah. Because I, I can't imagine. I don't remember if we talked about this. We talk about so much. We do. I mean, we've got to get Sidorak at some point, right? We've got to get Sidorak. Which then would definitely give us the juggernaut, yeah. which they've done the juggernaut twice. Right. And while I was, you know, excited to see the juggernaut in Deadpool, right. they're not doing the stuff that makes the juggernaut cool. Right. For those that don't know, and I know we say that a lot, but for those, um, juggernaut gets his powers from a basically an interdimensional demon. Right. His name is Sidorak. Uh, he imbues his power into um, an avatar, and you've kind of got to create. Destruction. Yeah, havoc. Yeah, it's yeah, a job. yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, you're you are unstoppable, and the more damage that he creates in Sidorak's name, the more powerful he he, can, he he maintains a certain level of power. Sure. Um. So I mean, sometimes Doctor Strange, which in Infinity War, even though they didn't say it, when he like wraps up like the gauntlet on 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 um on Thanos's hand, right. like to keep him from like closing it, um, he's using the Crimson Bands of Sidorak to do that. Like they look like it. They look, you know, it's, is it is so a, cool. it is a spell that that uh, uh, Doctor Strange uses quite frequently in the comics. Okay, and it they look like that. That's awesome. So, so technically, uh, it's there. It is there. They just couldn't call it that at the time, right? But we know now. We you do. know, and we know. Right. When Bendis and I and I've talked about this, I think before on the show. When Bendis started writing a lot of Doctor Strange stuff, something that he would do, and I love, and they they kind of keep it going a little bit depending on the writer, but he'll throw up a spell. And in the in, in the panel in the comic, it'll say, you know, just for context, uh, Book of Sidorak, page six, oh. <laughs> Bell of Bell, a spell right, of binding. It gives you a reference. Yeah, it gives you a reference. That's so awesome. And I mean, dude. if they made a, a magician's book, I would totally get I'd it. I buy that. Too. You know, and you know what they didn't do in the first Doctor Strange? I don't think they mentioned the Vishanti at all. Oh my God, they didn't. And oh, that's yeah. something like it, that's a big deal. In the comics, he oh by the Vashanti, yeah, you know, yeah, it's like that's him. A big deal. Yeah, so they, they didn't mention the Vashanti I gods think at all. Did. I didn't think I didn't I didn't recall Why? that either. Yeah, it's very very common phrase that that there's even like the books of the Vashanti yeah, and everything. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, they don't mention that at all. So we still have a lot more to do. Oh yeah, still Doctor have a lot Strange got a lot of cool lore, and if they could, oh man, I, I, again, this is the movie. I'm excited. For because I, the rumors going around, and it makes some sense that, like, because it's called the Multiverse of Madness, you know, you got to infer that he's looking for, you know, a soul gem sure. or or what did he or time uh, time gem. That's time, what he had. Yeah. Because obviously, with Dormammu still at the gates, like he ain't gonna be just waiting. Right. Like, oh, we had a gentleman's agreement. <laughs> like, no, no, no. You don't have he the time. To bargain. Come yeah, on. you don't have the time stone anymore. <laughs> so you know he'll be he'll be world hopping regardless. Ooh. So it'd be interesting if we see. Sidorak, if, sure. if we see uh, uh, Shumagorath, all of these very deep cuts Marvel people. Right. Oh, Cleo. Cleo oh, in, the, in the hell dimension, you know? Cleo? Miss Cleo? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, kids, that's our show for today. Thank you guys so much for listening. If you like what we're doing, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, give us a like. Leave us a comment. Um, are you excited about the prospects of Brother Voodoo? Are so there some other Doctor Strange people that you really want to see? Are you sad about uh, the ending of Arrow? Um, you you want to give some some uh, some props to the Black Mamba himself? You know, leave us a comment below. Eric, what did you learn today? Oh, you know, I <coughs> I, I, I I need. This Doctor Strange movie faster. Yeah. I need it now. Yeah. Now that we're talking, I didn't think I was this excited for it until we started talking about yeah. it. Yeah. Now I'm more. I'm way so excited. I can see Doctor Strange stuff being your favorites of of this kind of uh, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, phase. Yeah, right. You know, yeah. I've always been into that. You know, magic kind of. Yeah. Black magic kind of psychedelic stuff. Psychedelic so. looking yeah, stuff. Psychedelic, yeah. They really so, went psychedelic in the first movie. I was. I was. Oh yeah. Uh, it was. I was very pleased. 
Um, I learned that uh, uh, pop culture spans many, many things. Yeah. And and even though we don't pay attention to everything. Um, well, you're a big sports dude. I am a big sports dude, but, you know, uh, it's – it's nice to have these things, you know, the the k- 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 crossover uh, <laughs> between between the genres of of, of sports. This uh, is our multiverse of madness. Yes, here. very much so. You know, even even though it's over sad news, yeah, um, sense. there is there is some some good. It's getting people talking. I mean, I told you some Kobe Bryant stories that yeah. you didn't know, didn't know earlier before the didn't show. Know. Things you didn't know, and it's nice to be able to share those you kinds know, of things. The only thing you can expect from grief. Is finding something inspiring. From I do, I do. I, I love a good story. It was nice to think about things that I hadn't thought about in a while. Um, guys, I want to thank you guys so much for listening. I have been your host, Roman Chavez. I'm still Eric Icarus, and we are off to do some work oh, getting yeah. that studio ready. Thank you guys so much for listening. We will catch you on the next podcast.